Hello everyone, uh, Mark Hanchett, founder and CEO here at Atlas, and it's time for a Q&A on polymer battery cell. So first question, how will the polymer cell hold up over the years as uh, plastic is not necessarily as durable or as strong as metal? Well, the plastic material that we're choosing uh, actually is being developed or designed into the particular product to ensure that it's gonna last that 10 years, that million miles sort of life of that particular vehicle. In fact, it should last almost 20 years or more. Uh, and that particular sort of metric that we set there is driven by the fact that it's integrated into the pack solution, uh, the polymer and material that we're selecting, as well as the different environmental conditions and everything else that it's subject to. Uh, we also don't have to worry about corrosion like you would with a typical metal uh, cell. So the next question is, do all of the cells drain, uh, I guess, in parallel to each other or equally? Uh, how does this affect uh, cell life over a period of time? Um, and then uh, I think that's sort of related to charge and discharge of the particular battery pack. So in any battery pack, um, the cells are all sort of impedance matched, right? They're performance matched. So you try to develop a battery pack solution where the cells that are in parallel, as well as all of the cells in uh, series, all perform equally. But over time, that's actually not true. Over time, different cells degrade faster than other cells, and it comes down to the battery management system and cell balancing. Now remember, Atlas does active balancing where we take energy from one cell, we put it into another one. So if one drains faster, maybe it has higher resistance or lower resistance, um, we actually balance that particular process. So we don't discharge it through heat like the rest of the market. Um, now, in terms of how that works both in parallel and series, well, in parallel, if you have four cells in parallel, each one's going to drain equally. If one's draining faster, energy is going to go back into that, um, so it self-balances. For the ones that are in series, that's where the battery management system comes in, and it sort of takes energy from one series, maybe it's up the chain and then brings it back down in the chain, or from the bottom all the way back up in those two particular scenarios. But in that case, the battery management system handles that. Uh, that process of sort of discharging and charging or performance variations within the different cells. So the question is, why would you get rid of individual cells and uh, basically incorporate that larger cell solution to, into a pack configuration? Well, there's a little bit of a misunderstanding there. Um, if one group of sort of cells is bad, we can still replace those in a pack configuration, but it's um, just a different process to go through and do that. Also, when we're building a single cell solution, there's some very unique technology that we're uh, implementing in that particular use case where uh, the different layers, the different anode and cathode layers, if we've got one anode and cathode layer in there that's actually failing, we don't lose the entire cell, we just lose those couple of layers um, that's inside there. So your cell sort of capacity might come down, but it's not a drastic drop like you would have today if you lose a singular cell in that particular assembly solution. Now, when, why are we doing this? It's all about driving efficiency in the process, weight down, cost down, driving value for the end customer up, driving performance up. All of those things are, are sort of balancing um, on top of or next to each other. But by removing the individual cells, that allows us to turn some all of those knobs in positive directions. So the next question is, how does a plastic cell deal with heat compared to a metal cell? Well. Uh, if you recall in some of our other videos, cooling the cells from the sides is actually a very inefficient method of cooling battery cells. Um, it's not the ideal choice. I know it's done by one of the industry leaders today, um, but you actually want to cool the cells by pulling heat from the anode and cathode layers that are inside there. So Atlas's proprietary technology is what we call um, basically an infinite electrode or tabless design. Um, we actually cool the cells top and bottom. We're eight times more efficient than our nearest competitor. The sides of the cell, they can be insulated and you actually want them to so you don't necessarily have, in the case of a fault, transfer of energy from one cell to the next cell. Um, and we can actually extract heat so efficiently that if there is the event of a cell failure, we can pull heat out of that system and it doesn't lead to a catastrophic failure after that. Minimal possibility of that. So that leads into our final question, which is, is the polymer cell less safe, I guess? Is it gonna lead to higher probabilities of failures in accident scenarios and things like that? And the answer to that question is actually no. Um, it actually can increase safety in terms of having heat propagation as one cell fails, transferring to the next cell or adjacent cell. It's an insulator in between there. 
Um, also, because we extract heat top and bottom uh, from that particular cell solution, because we're eight times more efficient than our nearest competitor, when there is an internal fault in a cell, our cooling system kicks on and it can actually extract heat before a catastrophic cell failure occurs. Now, when we think about structure, by eliminating the cells, that long-term particular perspective, we can actually build structure into that particular pack assembly. And then while the jelly rolls are stuffed in between those structural components, that becomes a true structural pack. So that combined with the external structure of the enclosure, the frame structures and everything else that's around it within that particular vehicle, we actually increase safety from that particular perspective. A majority of your safety is gonna come from the outside, but we can add additional structural components on the inside to improve that safety. So to answer your question, no, um, it's actually an improvement in performance and improvement in safety, um, as well as a reduction in the possibility of cascading failures in that particular pack solution. And that's all coming down to the Atlas technologies that we're developing here. And we're launching those pack solutions this year and those cells this year. And a lot of that came from your investments. Remember, we can't do any of this without you, so be sure to click that invest uh, button on the page. We're uh, raising $10 million currently. If you have any further questions, put them in the comments. We'll try to answer those in maybe the next Q&A.